All right. In the last installment of these, I read from issue three of Sybil's Garage. And this one I'm reading from issue four. And you can see we've gone to a glossy paper. Uh, it's really pretty. Uh, the cover shows a fish exploding out a window. I don't know if that refers to one of the internal stories. I don't remember that story, but fish exploding out a window seems speculative. This is a flash piece. Again, uh, the piece of music that it was written to. This one was uh, <laughs> Skull Crusher Mountain by Jonathan Colton. Uh, the title is An Appetite for Love. He wooed me in the language of flowers. Are you familiar with that charming, although dated, convention? The Victorians used nosegays to express their feelings to convey the passionate messages they were too repressed to speak out loud. The first day, my salad plate was garnished with leaves of lemon balm, tiny citrus-scented flowers signifying that one is looking for love. I picked a sprig up, and when I saw him looking through the kitchen portal at the diners, tired eyes filled with desperation, white chef's hat askew, I caught his glance and touched my lips to the leaf, leaving a smear of pink lipstick. He smiled and turned away back to his duck confit. In the following weeks, his messages garnished each daily special placed before me, mint for warm feelings, marjoram for love, I'm sorry, marjoram for joy and happiness, lavender for devotion, dandelions for wishes come true. I ate each rich dish they decorated, pig's tongues with pomegranate sauce, cochon de lait, and grouse stuffed with veal sweetbreads. Inevitably, this correspondence led to a thickening of my hips. A decided paunch rode my belly, swelling out over my mons. But when I spurned a plate of poulet basquets on a bed of eggplant, chanterelles, and bits of pepper garnished with blue pansies for thoughts of love, he looked so forlorn, I picked my fork up again. Rose water pudding sprinkled with red and white petals, sage roasted chicken stuffed with sunflower seeds, I ate missive after missive, sacrificing my girlish figure in an effort to please my love. Eventually, my jowly ardor drove him away, made him withdraw, despite the fact that the rosemary twig women he sent salads dusted with red carnation petals eschewed them all for glasses of water. I watched, and the sympathetic pain in my face angered him. Now I pick up my fork again and look at the plate the waiter has set before me, deadly oleander and monk shod served with a dribble of white truffle oil and balsamic vinegar drops sitting on the leaves like dark, tangy tears. All right, if you enjoyed that, there's the picture. There's the magazine. Let me know what you think. Thanks.